Last Monday, a small wooden boat washed up on a beach in northwest Japan. The Coast Guard found eight bodies on it. There were clues that it came from North Korea, including life jackets with Korean lettering and North Korean cigarettes on board. This wasn't the first incident. In fact, North Korean boats have been washing up on Japan's coast since 2013, and the number of ships has risen since then. At least four of these so-called ghost ships washed up on Japanese beaches just last month. These mysterious deaths were reported internationally. Japan suspected these grim cargoes had once been spies or defectors, lost and starved to death in stormy seas. In addition to the mystery of these dead men, another curious fact also intrigued me. In Korean waters, squid numbers had plummeted by over 70%. The total amount of squid caught in Gangwon-do province, a regional specialty from the nation's East Sea, has fallen by more than half in a decade. The Gangwon-do provincial government estimates local fishermen could face financial losses of more than 80 million US dollars. For the first time, and with the help of revolutionary new satellite tracking technology, we were able to investigate what linked the dead men and the disappearing squid. Two-thirds of the planet is covered by water. It's our planet's wildest frontier, breathtaking as much as it is vital to all life. A place of discovery and endless reinvention, a metaphor for freedom, as well as a profoundly dystopian realm where the darkest of all humanities play out. Over 50 million people work at sea, and human rights and environmental abuses often occur with impunity. Six, six, of you. six people we are sleeping in here. So hot. This is, un I've never ever seen this bad. My name is Ian Urbina. As a journalist, I've spent the past decade reporting from this lawless frontier. I run an investigative journalism organization called the Outlaw Ocean Project that reports about crimes happening in this space. This is the Outlaw Ocean. After sanctions, the North Korean currency collapsed, and the North Korean leader turned to fishing to generate export revenue and stave off famine. Soldiers were forced to become fishermen overnight to bolster the effort. Many thought that the dead who washed ashore in Japan weren't defectors at all, but seafarers desperate to catch food, poorly trained, navigating ill-equipped boats, straying too far in the high seas. Fuel had run short, engines had stalled, a storm had finished them off. All North Korean stories are hard to investigate. Gaining access is difficult. It's harder still if it involves its unclaimed corpses washed up on foreign shores. As recently as about five years ago, we really had essentially no idea who was fishing where in the world's oceans. I partnered with Global Fishing Watch, a new NGO that's become a game changer. We'd like to identify where vessels are turning off their transponders, or it's called going dark. For us, when a vessel goes dark, it raises suspicion. It's a clue that something might be up on the water. But we don't know because we can't see it. That is all changing now with this new satellite technology. What you can do is you can combine the GPS positions with the images to see how many vessels out there are not 
broadcasting their locations. In order to catch squid, you can't stay dark for long. Squid vessels have really bright light in order to attract the squid to the surface. If they haven't got those lights on, they're not squid fishing, but when they do, they clearly are. So it's a, it's, an, it's a double indicator. We can one, detect them, and two, if they've got them on, we know that they're fishing. And we were able to teach the computer through machine learning to recognize the different fishing patterns that we needed to see. And what we discovered after looking over a year's worth of data is there was probably a thousand vessels fishing illegally in North Korean waters in contravention to UN sanctions. Chinese vessels fishing in North Korean waters, that is clearly in breach of UN sanctions. And news reports captured the deadly consequences. North Korean boats, which are not as strong and well-built as the Chinese boats, were displaced. They were pushed further out to sea. And we now know that these ghost boats probably originated from this displaced fishery in, in North Korea. When Global Fishing Watch did this incredible data mining that largely proved China's role in the ghost ships, they contacted my team and asked us to investigate further, to get on the water and to lay eyes on the ships directly. I went to South Korea with my videographer, Fabio Nascimento, and we also brought one of their data scientists, Jaeyoon Park. We bought our way onto a South Korean squid ship that agreed to take us out to the key location at sea where we believed we had the best chance of witnessing Chinese vessels moving into North Korean waters. We'll be, we'll be there for 36 hours, probably not sleeping, probably a little bit miserable, <laughs> uh, depending on the on, on sea conditions. Yeah, we can, we can get as many Chinese vessels as possible and say hello. Satellite coordinates guided us to a specific location. We now waited, and as it turns out, not for very long. The first line of vessels appeared, all Chinese, all squid vessels, in a single file. Come on, come on. Hey, they are. Let me get my binoculars. I don't know what type of boat it is yet. All these vessels were dark their transponders were off. As they passed in front of us, we tucked in behind and began to follow them. Given the shape of the boat, I think it's a trawler. Look through. But they are, they are, they are really dark vessels. They don't appear on the, on the, on the uh, monitoring. Uh, on Only the radar, we can okay. see some metal object moving. OK, all right. And there are three, this guy behind? Yeah, there are four. There are four. Are these um, trawlers? Look, look like very much a yeah, trawler. Wow, I've never seen this. You can see really the structure of the vessel. It's wild, it's really wild. We were able to gather valuable evidence that they were all Chinese and that they were all squid vessels. We put up a drone to get a closer look and document further identifying details. We then radioed to the Chinese and tried to make contact with them. They didn't reply. Well, not verbally, anyway. But their message became clear. They're, they're annoyed. Yeah. We see another oh, wow. boat very close. It looks we're, very wow, uh, modern. We're, we're getting very close. In fact, we're on a collision course. We peeled off at the last minute to avoid a collision. The Chinese swatted at us. Right. The aggression leveled at us was illustrative of the muscular way that these fleets operate on the high seas. The next morning, we encountered a second cluster of Chinese vessels. We gathered more evidence of the size of the fleet, the direction of travel, and whether they were flying Chinese flags. We were so close, I could even see their numbers. 
but it's got Chinese characters in front. This guy's coming right at us. Should we be worried about that? We got two more over here. So what's our total tally then? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, this is like unbelievable. Look at it, like. <laughs> They're all coming. Well, it's like, also just. Like zombies. There's so many of them. We return to the United States with an enormous amount of evidence. Human intelligence gathered on the seas, corroborated by artificial intelligence in the skies, proving that beyond a doubt, giant squid fleets were illegally raking clean North Korea's waters. Of why so many North Korean bodies were washing up on Japanese shores and why the squid stock in the area was disappearing. Today, China is the ocean's uncontested superpower. It commands the largest fleet in the world and, according to the UN, hauls in 15.2 million tons of marine life a year, which accounts for 20% of the global seafood catch. I've since reported on similar fleets operating off South American waters, around the Galapagos and Falkland Islands and off the coast of Patagonia, in waters so densely packed by Chinese squid vessels that from the sky at night, these trawlers appear like a city of lights. 